<laughs> All right, we are live. We're actually live. Um, so hopefully, take three. yes, take take eight. So um, hopefully, some of you that um, maybe were on the other live that we ended uh, make it back here. But for those of you watching afterward or joining us now, make sure. If you're joining us now, it uh, looks like some people are joining us that you let us know you're here and let us know your questions. So we are Green Juju. And what I mean by that is we are the entire company um, sitting right in front of you. Um, and we're glad to have Kelly here today. Kelly is the owner and founder of Green Juju. She is the biggest celebrity at Green Juju. So um, <laughs> I am Billy. I am the vice president of nutrition and communication. And we are so happy to be here and we're so excited about our new products. Um, and we're so excited to take your guys' questions about our raw goat's milk. Oh, we all we both have products. I'm so <laughs> I'm so proud of the fact that we're prepared here. We didn't and, even coordinate that. No, we didn't. And Bam's beets and also um Lua's golden paste. So we are very excited. Hi to uh, Sonia, as well as Terry and Lauren. So we noticed the numbers are rising of people coming in. So thank you guys so much for coming. It really does mean a lot to us um, every time we do these lives that you guys want to come and learn and ask questions. And I know for me, um, and, I, and I'll let you speak for yourself, Kelly, but I know it is an enormous privilege, you know, to be able to make these products and to source these products and, and to really, I'm excited to see the health outcomes that'll come out of these products. Cause that's, I think why we both do what we do um, just in general. So very excited about that. So um, do you have any thoughts on that, Kelly? I mean, when I started doing this almost 10 years ago, people thought I was crazy for suggesting feeding plants to dogs. So I'm absolutely thrilled that not only am I not crazy, but that people are excited about this with us. Um, so yeah, coming out with more and more things and more and more ways to incorporate plants and other good nutrients in pets' diets. And most importantly, just making it easier for people to do this is very, very exciting. I'm at a very fortunate place in life where I love going to work every day. Exactly. And so even though you have to put up with me, I mean, it's a terrible <laughs> thing. So um, so let's take a minute here while you guys start, uh, you know, asking your questions. And thank you um, for people saying they're so pumped for the new products. But I'm gonna just going to take a second here and start to, to go over some of them. So uh, in case some of you don't know, um, what's going on here. So these are BAMS Beats and BAMS Beats come in a six ounce package. Um, BAMS Beats are an amazing everyday uh, item to feed your um, dog. And so this is fermented beets and fermented purple cabbage. And so the, the key to these first two items that I'm gonna mention here is it's a wild ferment. So wild ferments are really cool. So wild ferments means that you just, you know, sort of like bring the pH down in the product and you let all of the natural bacteria grow within it. Right. And so all of the, the, the my favorite thing about this is when you feed this product, so let's say you get a, this pouch and then you get another pouch and then you get another pouch, you're going to get a different set of bacteria, just depending on those soil based organisms that are in uh, the product itself. So I think wild ferments are really cool in that way. And so um, you also get, you know, the deep sort of aside from the soil based uh, antioxidant or I'm sorry, uh, probiotics, you also get this deep, deep color. You can see here, it's a very, very deep purple in this batch, which is going to be um, a really amazing antioxidant from the, the beets and the purple cabbage. It's also great for the digestive lining as well um, with the uh, with the cabbage as well. And then from there, where we move on to Lua's uh, fermented golden paste. So w here we have uh, a product, obviously, that's near and dear to my heart. I should mention, too, that this is named after Bambi, who is Kelly's French bulldog. Um, and here we have Lua's fermented golden paste. So with this golden paste, um, it's something I'm really proud of that we did here, and that is um, we took what is normally, so people normally take 
food and and sort of make it a supplement, but we re re-engineered a supplement back into food. So this is, as far as I know, the only raw golden paste on the market. And the reason we can do that is because we're actually, instead of cooking the starches and processing them that way, we are actually in that case, um, fermenting it. So the bacteria are going to eat those starches and sugars. And so we're going to keep this in a raw food state. And also another really cool thing is when you ferment turmeric, the curcumin, which is the most active ingredient, actually turns into a different type of and more bioavailable curcumin, and you get all the other surrounding plant compounds. So this is going to be really awesome for animals that uh, are, deal with inflammation, senior animals, you know, animals dealing with joint issues, you know, inflama inflammation can affect many parts of the body. So this is going to be a really, really cool option. This is in six ounces as well. I saw someone ask if they were a liquid they're, they're more of a paste and um and then as an intro as well we have raw goat's milk so um this is the pint obviously this is the um the quart I use my use my bum hand as a as a stand here it's very <laughs> exciting <laughs> So, uh, and this is the half gallon. So these, these wait, are what you were... Wait, do that again. <laughs> are you going to take a still shot of this? Sure am. <laughs> so here we have uh, the half gallon as well. Um, so this is raw goat's milk in its pure form. So we're not adding probiotics to it. There's no fermentation that we're adding. This is raw milk and raw milk is the star. It's not how you process milk necessarily is that's the most important part it's not what you add to milk that's the most important part it's the milk itself we all know that raw milk is the most complete food on earth that it takes the least amount of digestion that it contains 200 probiotic species that it's infinitely complicated and developed by biology and evolution so just an amazing thing but we did uh so Kelly, why did we do the regular version and how can people feed it maybe some other ways? So we did the regular version because we believe that nature got it best on its own. Um, and so feeding it pure and raw on its own has its own amazing benefits. But then we are, by feeding it that way, you can also customize it two different ways. So if you want to ferment it, um, we have a video that shows you different ways that you can ferment it. And what makes this really unique is that you can use a different probiotic every time you ferment it. And that's really important because that means that you are creating a more diverse microbiome. Whereas if you feed a milk or any, 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 anything that has probiotics already added to it, you're feeding those same probiotics over and over and over. And so those are going to accumulate in the gut and you're going to have, even though they're good bacteria, you're going to have an uh, off balance microbiome. So by being able to ferment it yourself using your own, um, you know, range of probiotics that you use, you're able to create a more diverse microbiome. The other option is to make it lactose free. So this is for one of the, very core missions of green juju is to cater to sensitive dogs because I have two sensitive, have had um, two sensitive dogs. And every time I walked into a pet store, I could never find anything that worked for them. Um, and so it's always been a mission to cater to sensitive dogs. So by creating this lactose free option, which is also discussed in this video, um, that will provide an option for even the most sensitive dogs. Most dogs tolerate goat's milk just fine as it is. Um, but for those that don't, you can try lactose free and still get a ton of great benefits from goat's milk without the lactose. Yeah. So go to our website and click on the raw milk, raw goat's milk section, and you can download that video and it's very easy. You'll be so surprised how easy it is to fermenting raw dairy is incredibly simple. It's, it's much simpler than doing something like this. So that's why, you know, we wanted to be able to do that. One note I will tell people about fermenting with goat products. So I've actually uh, fermented uh, all of the Adored Beast probiotics, which work amazingly. Um, so I think you are frozen momentarily, Kelly, but- um, There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> but we can hear you. So 
Um, so that's it's the a most really flattering part. freeze. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the most important part. So um, I've also, you know, for instance, um, used a local yogurt. I've used my my daughter who is a toddler, her toddler probiotic um, to to ferment these. So one thing I do want to tell you is with goat milk, when you ferment it, you're going to get a thinner ferment. So you're typically not going to get, and that has to do with, um, you know, the fat content and some other things when compared to cow's milk. So keep in mind, you are getting a nice ferment. If, if you get a ferment where it separates and you're seeing the whey versus the other part of it, all you got to do is shake it up, mix it up, and it goes in. It's exactly what you want. Uh, but I just wanted to give people a heads up on that in case they're like, why isn't this as thick as regular yogurt? Uh, raw ferments are never going to be as thick as, as regular yogurt because basically heat is part of the reason that that becomes so thick. So keep that in mind, but you can use any probiotic um, that is viable. It's also, if you're a huge nerd, a really great way to tell if your probiotics are viable because when you get a probiotic, it's just powder, right? Um, and so the, this will actually tell you if they're going to grow. So, you know, I've gotten some really good ferments, for instance, off of the Adored Beast um, probiotics. And so we know that those are, you know, going to be effective in order to do that. So we are super excited. Yep. Oh, I was just going to say the other thing to mention, too, is the sourcing of this. Um, I, I am going to get the personal privilege to be able to personally inspect all the farms that we work with. Um, all of all of these new products are produced uh, very close to my house here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And um, so, you know, we are sourcing from, you know, Lancaster has amazing soil and that goes into, you know, these goats when they're eating that forage, when they're doing that, it, it helps the nutrient content. This is the best source raw milk in the country. Um, and that's really at the heart of what we do here. And those goats are on pasture, they're, you know, uh, engaging in natural behaviors. They're out in the sun. Um, and so you can always count on us to make sure that that is the case. And so a big part of green juju is, you know, trust and a face with why we, us telling you why we produce things and having a face to that and being able to ask questions. So that is why we're here. Uh, I wanted to, oh, am I echoing? Uh, a little, but you're good. So I wanted to go over these two and maybe cover some questions before they come up. Yeah. Um, so what is, I guess I'll kind of say what I think and then have you answer, um, the difference between two of them. Like when would you use Bam's Beats versus the Golden Taste? Um, one of my, you had talked about the inflammation with the joints and everything for the Golden Taste. I mentioned before that I really like it for super active dogs, um, recovering from playing fetch for an hour and a half, like Bailey did. This probably would have been really good for her. Um, Bambi just tweaked her back the other day, and she's been getting a heavy dose of this, which I think has been helping her out. Um, but also when, this is kind of more of an overall body support one, right? So explain how you would differentiate the two and when you would use each. Yeah, that's a great um, that's a great point you make about active dogs because you know um, act, people forget that you know it's not just senior dogs, it's not just dogs dealing with disease conditions, which would also be a great um, a great situation for something like this, you know, for just reducing inflammation. Um, just generally, but also for those, for you're right, for recovery, for those high athlete dogs, for, you know, or even down to, you know, a lot of us make changes when our dogs start to get middle-aged or a little bit older, and we want to preempt some of those, you know, some of those things that would be a great option for this. Right. But if you look at the surface before you see it. Yeah, exactly. So it's always good to, to start preemptively, feeding for different life stages, right? When I was feeding Lua, it's much different than I feed Huckleberry because, you know, I would worry less about this with my eight month old puppy as I would today when I added this to both of his meals, right? So this is going to be, um, so, so basically, you know, I, I, for lack of a better term, I consider this to be like a highly medicinal product. 
because curcumin is such an anti-inflammatory. So this is like, um, hey, we need a solution to a problem or we want to preempt a problem specifically. This is where you're going to go for everyday um, solutions to just general health. So you want your, your dog to get, you know, a high dose of these of antioxidants every day, right? That's where combining this with uh, just greens or a Bailey's blend or the, or the golden blend or something like that is really going to help. Um, but also one of the things that I think we're going to start talking about more is uh, building a better microbiome. And that comes from, because usually gut, all health really starts in the gut and your immune systems in your gut and how your body reacts to things. All these things are based in the gut. And so this is going to be an amazing way to give soil-based probiotics every single day. So this is going to be where you're going to inoculate the gut with those wonderful soil-based probiotics. They're going to last longer. They're going to set up in the gut. It's going to be easier for them to set up in the gut. You're going to get variants there. Um, and then you can combine this with our blends to feed those probiotics. So, you know, if you're doing rotating between our blends and getting those 17 different plants per day, um, you will be able to feed those probiotics most effectively, as well as add other antioxidants. So this for me is a, a daily, you know, I try to get as many different, you know, probiotic sources through foods as I can into my dog's own diet. And this is a way that I've been doing, um, you know, making stuff at home and that kind of stuff for years. Um, and this is a way that we can do that. So this is every day, every dog. Now imagine if you took both of these products and use them for your senior dog. I think you'd get even better results, right? Um, but this can be, this is something that my eight month old puppy will get his entire life basically every day. Um, you know, and then this will be something that uh, I think is more targeted for, you know, what you were talking about. So back when years ago, when I made the beet blend, remember? And I only did it for a short period of time because I was concerned about the sugar content. Can you talk about how the fermentation process changes that sugar concern to the beets? Yeah. So beets are higher in sugar, but this will have virtually no sugar. Um, and that's because fermentation is the art of those bacteria eating the sugars. So uh, when, when we ferment this for seven days, what happens is you add uh, sea salt, which carries, by the way, its own health benefits, which carries its own, you know, every mineral, every trace element. Um, we use the best sea salt, the same sea salt that I have in my kitchen right now that I use for, you know, my family. Um, best sea salt in the world. And so you're bringing down that pH and then all those wonderful natural bacteria in here come out and they, they, they continue to grow because they grow better at a lower pH. And the, the other cool thing is it's food safety. So the, the pathogens that one might be worried about in raw foods don't grow. Uh, they have a very difficult time growing at those low pH levels. And that's why fermentation was developed as a food safety method. So all of those um, wonderful bacteria that are going to help your animal's gut also help to eat all of those sugars as well. So this is a great way to feed beets without virtually any of the sugar. Do... Does fermentation affect the oxalate content? Um, not as far as I know, but I would say at the dosage that you're doing of this product, it's not really going to, uh, oxalates are one of those things that I think people can run, they can kind of run with. Um, unless you're feeding like beets as the main diet, which obviously no one's doing to, you know, a dog uh, or a cat, I, you really don't have to worry about it in this case. Agreed. So do we want to start taking questions or do you have more questions? <laughs> oh, did I put that up there? I don't know. I don't oh, wait. Oh, I got, oh, I didn't, we well, know we could do this. There you go. Thank you for saying you're pumped about the new products. Ooh, maybe I can like do this as we have questions. That's pretty exciting. Uh, let's go to the top and start answering questions because we yeah. people it was a Q and A. I'm up at the top here. Um, so here's a question. Um, 
So Lauren wants to know if feeding beets all the time can lead to urinary crystals. Um, I have not, I don't, you know, I'm never going to make something up. I've never heard of that, especially at the level dosage that we'd be feeding here. Um, so I don't think so. Um, I think it largely would depend on the animal. So certain animals have um, sensitivities to certain foods. And so um, it's it's possible. I've just never, you know, seen it. So. But also with the fermentation process we're doing, you're getting a lot, like a lot or a little, right? So you get a big benefit, get a big benefit out of a small syrup. The echo is really messing with me. Yeah, no, it's hard <laughs> to talk um, in that case. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, so essentially, yeah, you're getting a better benefit because when you ferment it, it's pre-digested. So it's easier to digest. You're getting more maximum benefit out of it. You're getting all those extra nutrients. So I wouldn't worry about that with something like this, because again, if you're, you know, a 30 to 50 pound dog is getting one to two teaspoons a day. So that's not going to, um, I find that most things in terms of conditions and, um, you know, ailments that people are dealing with that are specific to maybe food issues like that tend to be more in supplements. So if you're using like a really concentrated beet supplement, I feel like you'd, you'd have an issue with that. Um, or just the amount, I feel like the amount always has to do with that as well. Um, so Lee says, is that a uh, dry base? Um, these are not dry. These are frozen. All of our, um, I'm going to do like a triple. All of our new products are frozen. So we are, we make wonderful freeze dried treats, easily the best treats on the market. Um, and, but we both, me and Kelly both believe that the, that, you know, that foods that retain their moisture are in their most natural state. I think that there's, um, a time and place for freeze dried, especially when it comes to, you know, convenience and, I think freeze drying foods is a much better um, preservation method than, you know, cooking and that kind of stuff. But we love, um, you know, our, our frozen blends and our frozen uh, products there. So. So this one is uh, Sonia here and Kelly, if you want to. Uh, so they're paste. So essentially a thick liquid thick liquid. Um, the BAMS beef are a little bit more liquid and the coconut, uh, sorry, the golden paste is a little bit thicker because the coconut oil stays cold in the fridge, but they're. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the next question is, what's my best response for a skeptical pet owner who may claim, oh, my dog would never eat that? Well, uh, from the palatability testing we did, we find that dogs will eat these products. Um, you know, we find that, um, so you're never really going to know that until you actually try it. So that, I guess someone could have that comment for every food item. And if you don't try it, then I guess you'd never know. So, um, we got great palatability on all these, uh, products. I know my dog who's sitting right down at my feet absolutely loves all of them. Um, so, you know, if you have anything to throw in there. I'm just trying not to talk too much. Um, yeah, I think we have an idea of what our dogs like, but we don't really, we don't really know unless we offer it to them. Like how often do you take your dog out into the woods or a field and they're just chomping down on a random plant? Like, you might think that tastes good to them, but apparently it does. Exactly. And, and there are dogs that, that you know, um, I was giving a talk last night for Holistic Actions, which is a great group, um, great online uh, pet education group. We were talking about picky pets and, and there's just a million reasons why dogs can be picky, you know, based on their genetics and based on, um, you know, their, their own taste palette and all those things. But these are things you're going to want to try. And there's always the mix it into the food method. I mean, it's pretty, um, 
self-explanatory there. So, um, so Sonia says, what is the recommendation for using it by seven days when open, for example? So, um, with the goat's milk here, if you're just feeding it straight up, you're going to want to use it within two weeks. If you ferment it, you know, a good rule of thumb will be to use it within 30 days. I think most people are going to use it, um, faster than that. Typically you might be shake this one up. You might be, uh, um, you know, hitting that mark if you're using the, the half gallon or something like that. Um, and then these products are already fermented. So they're going to be good for 30 days in your fridge. So, um, which is great because the dosage is a little bit smaller there, but that's one of the greatest things about fermentation is people have been using it as a food safety method to preserve the life of foods, uh, for a very long time. I feel like, by the way, I would like to give somewhat of an explanation for those people who are looking at the screen right now going, what is wrong with his hand? So never, I will say this, never try to live, you, you know, your glory years and join an adult flag football league. Cause you may end up with uh, five screws and a plate in your ring finger. And when you have a one-year-old child, your wife is really happy about that. So, <laughs> and she warned you from the beginning. <laughs> she absolutely did. She she famously said when I went to go play in the game, if you get hurt, don't come home. So <laughs> clearly I'm here. So that worked out. But um, and the last thing I'll say about it, it was kind of funny because I called her on the way home. And I'm like, we won the game. It was amazing. I was like, I hurt my finger, but I know it's not broken. It's fine. We'll just move forward. It was very broken. So. Um, so Beth says, um, this is a great question, Beth. Uh, so raw goat's milk has the same lactose as cow. Here's why I think that's such a great question because for some reason, and I read this online all the time, people say that goat's milk doesn't have any lactose. That is absolutely not true. Um, lactose is an interesting thing. People, it's sort of like demonized. So lactose, um, this is one of those things where like I could answer the question very simply, but I feel like this needs a roundabout answer. So lactose from raw milk is different than lactose in pasteurized milk. Lactose, when you pasteurize milk, becomes lactose B, which makes it much easier to absorb by the bloodstream. So you're getting more of like a sugar jolt if you're drinking pasteurized milk, wherein the lactose in this is made to not only uh, provide nutrition um, in, in those sugar forms to the the baby who's drinking this, um, but also to the gut, to the bacteria that are naturally present in it. So those bacteria, um, so the sugars, the, the lactose and other sugars in this milk are going to feed the bacteria as well. So it wouldn't make any sense. Like human breast milk also has lactose sugars in them, right? It actually has more, oddly enough, that's your little fact for the day. It actually has more than both cow and goat milk. Um, but uh, goat milk has slightly less, but it's only like one gram less. I feel like it's like in an eight ounce uh, glass of cow milk, uh, it's like 12 grams of lactose. I feel like this is 11 grams of lactose. So it's only slightly less, but it's not a problem because of what Kelly was talking about earlier um, with if you have a sensitive animal, if you ferment it, it's going to reduce the lactose. Um, there'll still be some residual lactose there, but it's going to reduce it because those, those bacteria are eating it. If you are going to, um, and obviously if you're really worried about the lactose, you can go ahead and make this lactose free, um, by just adding the lactase drops. And again, go to our, uh, website and click on raw goat's milk and download that. So to set the record straight for everyone, goat's milk just has slightly less uh, lactose and lactose sugars aren't, um, bad. So there's a reason why they're in milk. So that was my rant. Um, so Catherine says very beautiful, uh, picture there, Catherine, uh, can you ferment it if your room temperature is around 60 degrees in the colder months? Well, number one, turn up your, um, Heat. <laughs> turn up you're you're not 80 years old turn up the heat <laughs> it reminds me of uh, my in-laws house um so preserve herself <laughs> <laughs> so 
it will still work. It, it'll actually ferment in your refrigerator still. So if you did this at room temperature and then put it in your refrigerator, it still will continue to ferment in the refrigerator. It'll just be less because basically the higher the temperature up to a specific point, um, you're going to, the bacteria are going to be able to multiply faster. So you're definitely going to be able to do that. So if it's around 60 degrees in the colder months, just do your counter fermentation. Um, the other thing you can do, and this is like a real nerd tip for you as well, um, is you can take this product, ferment it, like put your probiotics in it, shake it up, put it in your oven and turn the light on just the light. Don't do anything else. And then take it out after 24 hours. And the light, if you put it by the light bulb, should provide enough warmth to get the temperature up. So there's your nerd thing for the evening. There's been many nerd things, but that's one of the nerd things. I see a question that I just looked up the answer to. Um, Doreen asked, what's the phosphorus content of the beets and turmeric paste? And I just looked it up on our reports. And for the BAMS beets, it is 0.03%. And for the golden paste, it is less than 0.01%. So whatever serving size you have, it's 0.03% phosphorus. So if that is helpful to calculate what you need. There you go. And I think, too, if that, if that is leading to a question where an animal would be needing on, to be on a low phosphorus diet, what she's what she's meaning in practical terms is neither of these things are going to contribute in any significant way when it comes to um, phosphorus. That's not no one's feeding this as a phosphorus supplement. So but we at Green Juju, you know, if you actually that's a good plug for our um, website, if you go to our product section and check that out, we do have the nutrient data for our products up there. So um, something to... if these guys are up there yet, they might. these aren't, but if you're wondering the same question about um, just greens, Bailey's blend, um, the bone broth, all of those different things. Um, so um, to be able to do that. So keep coming with the um, questions here. I'm super happy that um, uh, Ann Kirby is here and she's uh, the woman who runs the co-working space that I go to. So that's awesome to see some local um, Lancaster love there, Kelly. I say Lancaster as many times as I can. Um, so uh, Marilee asks, um, can you combine both of these? Yes, we are going to be doing some really cool education on different combinations of products for um, you know, for microbiome health, for, you know, health, maybe, you know, for looking at specifically seniors and that kind of thing. So, you know, a very quick sort of rundown of that would be, we're looking at the microbiome and, and how it can affect, you know, if you look at the human research, how can it affect behavior? You know, it affects a many, many things in, in the body in terms of um, how our immune response is, all those things. And so, there's a few things you want to look at. You want to look at how do I support the gut, the actual gut itself to be able to, to, um, you know, process nutrients and get everything out of these products, the bacteria, the nutrients, everything like that. So the first one will be supporting the gut. That's where bone broth comes in. That's where the vitamin U in this cabbage juice comes in to actually support the gut lining itself to be in a state where we can actually, you know, use these products effectively. Then you talk about inoculation. So then we can talk about, you know, these two products inoculating the gut with bacteria. We can talk about um, this inoculating the gut with um, uh, 200, over 200 species of, of probiotics that are innate in it, in and of itself. And That's then it, just on its own. Yes. So at any time your animal just drinks the regular, uh, you know, God's green earth, raw goat's milk, you're going to be getting over 200 species of probiotics um, and all of those. So that's the second thing is gut health, the lining. The second thing is inoculating the gut, feeding those bacteria with those products. And then the third thing is feeding those bacteria um, that we've just inoculated. So that's where our wonderful blends come in. So that's where Bailey's blend comes in. That's where Just Greens comes in. Um, that's where... Um, the golden blend comes in. So we can combine all of these products, no matter what you're feeding. It doesn't matter if you're feeding a 
uh, kibble diet all the way up to you make your own food or you feed a commercial raw diet or something like that. The combination of these things is going to make a better microbiome. So I think that to me is a very exciting is I think the most exciting part about all of this, uh, all these products, because we can take the vision that you put forth starting this company and use those things to support all these products to support each other. So to summarize in super easy terms, basically to create good gut health, you heal the gut lining using bone broth. You put good bugs into the gut using probiotics from either our fermented blends or goat's milk or fermented goat's milk. And then you feed those good probiotics with prebiotics that come from our dark leafy greens and our golden blend and our raw vegetable blends. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Steve, I should have just had you say it from the beginning. Bye. Yes, that's the true Seattle uh, experience there in Ballard. Um, so yes, and and I will add as well. We did we did do a, a campaign um, that uh, that was called the uh, Seventeen Plant Challenge, um, which is I put this one up because I thought you'd like it. Um, so. The 17 plant challenge, which is if you rotate between all of our blends, you will get 17 different plants into the, our frozen blends. You'll get 17 plants into your pet's diet. And we know that the more diversity in fiber and plants in general, the better the microbiome health is going to be because of all of those different types of fiber. So uh, how cool is it going to be when people start, um, you know, taking a, a heavily processed diet like kibble and adding some of our raw milk to it, some BAMS beets, and, you know, just greens blend as an ex example, um, to be able to fortify that gut for just total body health. I think that's very exciting. So if you're wondering, um, here is another question, good question from uh, Beth. So Bam's beets would be okay for a diabetic pet. Yes, absolutely. Also, side note about diabetes in general, um, fermentation, uh, one of the byproducts is acetic acid. It's what you smell when you smell vinegar and or like sauerkraut or anything like that. It's that, you know, that distinctive smell. And that is very good with helping to regulate blood sugar. So you actually get an added benefit even beyond just not having sugar. So we answered this question about the phosphorus and the beets. So check that out if you go back and watch it. Um, you know, I got to tell you, I don't know the answer to this question. <laughs> so I have a back I'm going to go back. I feel like we did this when we were like looking at the sizing and packaging and that we definitely, I want people to know, we definitely looked at this. I just don't know if either of us have it in front of us or no. I think that this is supposed to last a medium dog 30 days. There you go. So we think <laughs> that this is supposed to last a medium dog 30 days. Um, yeah. So if you want, um, Sonia, you could also reach out to us. You could email us at info at greenjuju.com and we could do the math for you. That's awkward. So side note, check that out. We're, we're not always 150% prepared. Uh, we're, we're lucky to just be here with the technical difficulties that we had. See, this is what I like to hear. This is a great comment. I warned my retailer last week to get ready to make more freezer space when the new products come in. Um, if you're a new retailer and you want more information about these products, um, I shouldn't say new retailer. If you're a retailer in general and you want more information, feel free to reach out to us. There's also a great retailer section on our website. Um, so so this goes. this question goes back to the um the oxalate again um these products are not going to be um served at a level i believe that will be um relevant to most dogs in terms of their um having 
a negative reaction, but that's not to say it's impossible. So if you have a dog right here that you're talking about, that's had two oxalate bladder stones removed, then maybe you want to start slow and move up to it. Right. Um, that's the thing about food. Like you can't predict every outcome. So 99% of dogs, um, going to be okay. So the question here is, if you want to handle this one, are we able to use it with any of the broths? Yes, absolutely. Um, and like Billy alluded to, we're going to do a series of different combinations of our products and how to use them all together. You were kind of cutting out there. Can you say that again? <laughs> you know. <what> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so use them all together. Um, and yeah. I, I think, yeah, we did kind of just go over that. So here is, this is a great question. Um, for white haired dogs, will Lua turmeric and Bam's beets stain? Um, it depends. I mean, turmeric is one of those things that, um, stains certain things, but I think it really just depends on, uh, how your dog eats. I'm, I'm, I think, I don't think so. I, I think you won't, most people won't have issues. You know, I think the turmeric would be more likely to, if it were to happen, but I think it really just depends on how your dog eats. So if your dog is going to stick his face in the bowl and get it all over his face and he's a white faced dog, I still don't think so, but you never know. Do you have any insight on this? I'm struggling here. If your dog gets dirty eating, I do think this is probably stain. I mean, it stains most white things. Yeah, I once was doing I also some. Have a white dog that doesn't get stained eating this though, because it's a small amount that you mix into the whole meal. So, if you put a plop on top, and your dog just like face that right into that. <laughs> it could happen, but I think if you mix it in, you probably won't. Have yeah, that's a good point. I it is a very small amount, and if if you're right, if you were really concerned about it, just mix it in with the food a lot. And yeah. I think that that's a good and that's a good point. You do have a white dog, and um, so Marilyn here says that she's having really good luck feeding her senior hound a hip and joint product. Um, but I know I should be rotating products. Would the golden paste be a good option to rotate with that product? Yes, or you could feed them both together even. So I know rotating. Uh, so one of the things that I think is a really interesting concept is to get as many different things into your dog's diet that are that are multifaceted as possible. So with this, you're going to get, it's going to kind of tackle it in a different way. So the hip and joint product is, is probably more based around like glucosamine and chondroitin and some collagen, some of those things that are needed to rebuild joints where this is going to be an inflammation reducer. So if you're, if you're, um, if you're hound, which I think I'm looking at right now is, you know, having severe issues, I might try to combine them. Um, but you could, uh, rotate them as well. It just depends on what works for your dog. I would, so add the bone broth for joint. Yes, exactly. Bone broth would be another uh, really good one as well to get some of those um, things in there. So we'll take a few more questions and then. Um, I wanted to address um, Laura Fulton's question. First of all, I think you're in Portland, right? And if you are, I really want to hear who you bet is. Um, but in terms of the just greens, freeze dried. There really isn't very much variation back to back. Um, so giving it every day would be okay. Rotating the other green blends and beets, I think, would be a great idea for your dog. Um, we always recommend rotation to get a broad variety of nutrients. Exactly. So rotating through those, and um, do you, you and you know this person. I think you're in Portland. If you're not, sorry. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> may think you're somebody else. Anyway, I'd love your vet medical test. Yeah. So um, it's one of those things. Um, 
Great question, Laura. And uh, um, this next one, Lillian, with the green yep. level. Uh, so when I was formulated to just greens blend for Bailey, I was really, really conscious of blood. And so that blend in particular, very low blood. Um, the Bailey's blend, basically I always avoided spinach as being main ingredient because it's high in blood. Um, we use a little bit of card in Bailey's blend, but I've always been conscious of having um, a low blood level basically. So I would be concerned about the green. Yes. So to I'm I am hearing you. I just want to recap these in case people are having trouble hearing <laughs> you. So Kelly uh, formulated that with the oxalate content in mind and wanted and wanted to keep it low um, when you talk about the just greens um, when she was formulating that for Bailey. Um, this is gonna be Kelly's favorite question here. Um, I bought the yogurt maker to ferment your new milk. Will it Will it cause the milk to get thick or will it stay liquid? Well, it depends. Um, depends on what you ferment it with. And so the goat milk will be a slightly thinner ferment. That doesn't mean that it just, it's just the consistency you get with goat milk typically. So it doesn't mean that there's any less bacteria there. Um, you'll be able to smell a difference, um, you know, in terms of doing that. So it just depends. The other thing that you can do, which I find thickens it up over time is, um, a quick thought on that is, so let's say you take your probiotic and you ferment this, uh, this quart of raw milk. So you're going to put your probiotic in here. You're going to shake it up. You're going to put it for 24 hours on your, um, on your counter. So these, um, cultures are going to have to get acclimated to this environment. So they're going to be, it's going to be even easier to do that. If the next time you ferment your milk, you go to the store and you get your quart of goat's milk and you just take some of your last fermented batch and pour it into the new one and you can do that forever you can just continually do that and those cultures will become more and more acclimated to this environment so that's one way to thicken it up if you want to do that feel free to email us if you have questions go download the video um you should be getting commissions on this yogurt maker Yes, the Louvel <laughs> yogurt maker. I tagged them on Instagram and they were like, oh, this is a good idea. And I'm like, I, do you know how many people buy these? Um, so um, this is a great question. So Christine says, um, this was not covered. Great question. So if she's feeding the golden blend, which contains turmeric, the uh, do, does she have to add it? Um, so Kelly, do you want to, you're frozen, but I can hear you, I think. So do you want to cover the, this question? I would say like you mentioned earlier that the gold case is more like a medicinal level. Um, there's a small amount of tumor in the golden blend, but it's not be as um, effective as the gold case. You're not gonna see the benefits from the golden blend you would from using gold paste. That's exactly right. So this is going to be You'll get like different benefits from the golden blend, just not yeah. The same. So this is a more uh, this is a more um, like again uh, this is kind of a more like targeted amount versus doing that. So hi to I party with Bruce Wayne who is amazing. Um, always good to see. Uh, her at events and et cetera. And uh, uh, she did mention uh, she was going to be in Portland. She was going to try to, or Seattle, she was going to try to track you down. So um, I'm here. And Laura is in Northern California. So you were wrong. So still look for that. Um, close, close. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So I'll see if there's uh, any more. Um... So Hope this is a good question. Um, so her colleague gets both the broth and the greens and does well. So thank you for that. We really appreciate you trusting us with your dog's uh, nutrition there. I'd like to try the turmeric one. Should you like to try Lua's emphasis on Lua's 
uh, for a minute to golden paste here. Um, do you find it's tolerated okay with sensitive dogs? So with sensitive dogs, it's still going to be a smaller amount that's going to be highly effective. So just start slowly. So, you know, if your dog is really, really sensitive, I would just do half, start with a quarter of the amount, half the amount. It's going to be a very tiny amount and just work up to it within a week or so. Um, and I think that most sensitive dogs will be totally fine with this product. Um, so Doreen says, honestly, it freaks me out to think about leaving milk out for 24 hours. It goes against everything I've ever been taught. Well, um, number one, this is raw milk. Um, and number two, the beautiful thing is you have added cultures to it. So you've added those healthy probiotics and they're going to flourish and they're going to fill up this milk. So none of those bad things you're worried about can, can thrive in there. So, um, so, all right, guys, I will, um, we'll take one more question. Um, so yes, Christine, uh, we would still use the golden blend and then we would, um, it, but if you need targeted support, uh, go into the golden paste. Um, so Judy says, um, can I add the thawed turmeric to my DIY meals and refreeze? Absolutely. You can, if you're making meals at home and your dog is lucky that, you know, you, they have such a dedicated owner, um, you can refreeze all of these products. You can refreeze any of our products. So I'm just going to start pulling all of our products from all over my house here. Um, so you can refreeze any of these things um, and add them to your DIY meals. But the other thing too is that even if you don't want to do that, they're good in the fridge for 30 days. So you can add them without refreezing them as well. So it just depends. So... Um, thank you guys so much. Um, really, really appreciate everybody, you know, who wants to come out and learn about what we're doing. One of the big, you know, the main reason we do these things is so you guys can know who's making your products, can ask us questions. It's trust is a very important thing with what you feed your dog, with what you feed your family. Something that's very important to me and Kelly. Um, we're both crazy nutrition people all around. Um, and so, um, Thank you guys so much for coming out and we'll continue to, you know, advocate for your pets and make products that, you know, are going to get the best health outcomes. So everybody have a good night and we will see you soon.